Hi, Pancha. Welcome. Today, I have the privilege of discussing personal finance with Robert Anderson. Robert is a Fanshawe College alumni and is currently a financial planner at Aspire Financial Group. He has years of experience dealing with the finances of young professionals and knows the ins and outs of how to achieve financial freedom. All right, Robert, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's great to uh, reconnect with Fanshawe and I'm looking forward to uh, your questions today. All right, so uh, how about we uh, start out with uh, you telling us uh, a bit about uh, what attracted you to finance and uh, your journey on becoming a financial planner? Uh, sure. Um, so, you know, it all started um, with actually some advice that I received um, at a young age. Um, you know, it started, uh, you know, my aunt, uh, she wanted to make sure, obviously, I got started off on the right foot. Um, you know, she told me, um, you know, start investing uh, what you can, um, you know, uh, get a credit card, um, you know, start building your uh, credit score uh, over time. So, you know, some of that key advice that kind of, um, you know, st stood out to me, um, you know, I acted on it. And then it wasn't until, you know, I first took marketing at at uh, Fanshawe um, that, uh, you know, at one point, um, you know, I was speaking with a professor and uh, we were talking about finance and he suggested I consider, um, you know, the finance program. And so that really opened my eyes, um, you know, to the whole industry. Uh, and then as I learned more in terms of, uh, you know, upon graduation, um, the demand for uh, the Fanshawe grads and the opportunities, um, did I really, um, you know, jump in with two feet and uh, I'm really glad I did. Definitely. I guess we're in the same boat. Um, um, like myself, I'm taking uh, accounting, but uh, my original uh, program of choice was uh, finance, but uh, I took an accounting class and I really liked it. So then I yeah. made the switch. So it's really, it really tells you that uh, no matter uh, what you start out, it's never like the end, it's never going to be like your plan is never going to be the same as you intended it to be. Eh? I agree. Stay open-minded. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So um, with, uh, there's a lot, so there's definitely a lot of uh, personal finance advice uh, available on the internet. Um, so with all this advice uh, available to to uh, to the public um, and with everyone, uh, um, everyone is uh, available to write uh, basically whatever they want on the internet. So with all this advice available, um, what do you think are some of the biggest uh, misconceptions that people have uh, regarding this topic? Yeah, that's another uh, great question. And, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, misconceptions, and this is something um, I hear, uh, especially from young people that might just be starting out, is, you know, that whole myth around, I don't have enough money to start investing. Um, you know, nobody really understands, um, you know, how easy it is to get started and maybe how, how little uh, it takes. And honestly, uh, the quicker one starts, uh, you know, the quicker, uh, you know, you can build up some good habits and, um, you know, really start to, um, you know, learn. And honestly, it becomes a, a bit addictive as you start to see some success uh, with your savings and investing and uh, maybe debt management, um, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and then I think, you know, after you build up some of those good habits, uh, you know, I think, you know, seek out professional advice too, right? Don't be shy, um, you know. People are um, out there like myself, um, you know, or an accountant or whoever, um, and, uh, you know, are willing to help you. So uh, don't be shy as well. Definitely, for sure. It's, uh, I feel like uh, I feel like you really uh, nailed it on this one. Uh, a lot of people uh, think, just like you said, uh, they think that, uh, oh, I need all this money uh, to start in, uh, investing or saving. But it's not really about how much you start out with. It's just about starting. It's really, uh, it's really important for people to know that. It really is, yes. And uh, so touching a little bit about uh, that topic, um, there's a lot of students, um, actually not only at Fanship, but like everywhere in Canada. Mm -hmm. A lot of students, uh, they have a tough time uh, managing their finances and uh, they need some sort of uh, direction. Uh, maybe the, some of them are not uh, as blessed as um, having um, the resources to get a financial advisor or a financial planner. Um, so with with all this, um, with all this uh, need of uh, people needing uh, direction on getting started on their finances, um, what is the first step uh, for students 
that uh, they can take now in order to uh, step themselves up for a successful uh, financial future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I think this is uh, really important. I mean, uh, uh, certainly in accounting, I'm sure you know you're uh, you know aware of income and expenses, right? When it comes to uh, business, um, you know, it really is that same concept we can apply to our own personal finances, and uh, you know, so really setting a budget, um, or you know, budget might be a taboo word, so maybe a spending plan. Um, you know, understand that money coming in and out. Um, actually, write it out. Uh, expenses. So, you know, what are your fixed expenses? So, you know, rent maybe or mortgage, uh, you know, property taxes, different insurance, um, things like that that are always going to be there. And then what are your variable expenses? Um, you know, things like, you know, food, clothing, um, you know, recreation, um, vacation, um, those types of items. Um, I think that'll be an important step, um, certainly in the beginning. Um, you know, one tool uh, that some someone might like to try is mint.com. Um, you know, it's an easy uh, tool, you know, you authorize your uh, bank accounts or credit cards, uh, and it all gets connected and uh, starts to pull in that data. And, um, you know, it really helps you visualize uh, your expenses. Um, some people might not be um, Excel junkies. Um, you know, it's not always uh, fun. So mint makes it easy, you can set budgets, uh, it'll send you email reminders, um, heads up on um, you know certain alerts um, which is helpful uh, people can also read books um, you know uh, we read a lot of content online or on our phones but you know a good old book um, you know can be the way to go sometimes uh, you know a classic in personal finance is uh, the wealthy barber um, i have both the original edition and the newer version uh, that he, you know he modernized and also books like you know rich dad poor dad um, I think is a good concept, um, you know, for uh, people to read, whether it's in business, personal finance, or just uh, really any um, industry. Uh, I think it's a great place to start. Definitely, for sure. I guess I feel like uh, actually uh, having a plan and uh, writing it, just like you said, um, it's actually going to help you um, know where you are at the moment and where you want to be. And especially, like you said, uh, for example, uh, an app like Mint, helps a lot, especially in this uh, day and age with all the uh, technology that we have. It really could make your life really easy and it helps you track where you are at the moment and where you want to be. Exactly. And, uh, you know, once you build that good foundation and understanding, um, then, you know, you just build the rest of the house from there once that foundation's in place. So Exactly. Exactly. Just start out small and then uh, just, uh, just uh, keep up the momentum and then you'll get there uh, sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And um, so I guess that you've had, um, you've had a lot of uh, clients, um, obviously. And so uh, based uh, on your experience, um, what motivates uh, people to uh, pursue uh, financial freedom and why is it important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important, right? I mean, you know, most of us, you know, we're, we don't want to, um, you know, work until, you know, the day we die, right? We want um, you know, to be able to do some of the things, you know, we want to do, um, you know, but I also think, you know, it's um, also about, you know, not working because we have to, uh, working because we want to, um, you know, I think that's an important thing. Um, you know, having that, you know, financial independence, um, you know, can allow someone to pursue their passion, um, you know, even if it doesn't make as much, um, you know, as another career, uh, it'll certainly reduce one's stress um, and what have you. Um, you know, and also, uh, you know, it's about creating that time, right? Um, you know, you always hear about those people working really hard, making lots of money, but they miss their kids' sports events and family time and things like that. And they regret it later on. So um, I think, you know, quicker you can have some financial independence or, you know, work towards that, the more fulfilling life um, you can have as well. And, you know, if it means traveling and you know, other um, hobbies and whatnot you want to pursue, that's, um, you know, okay too. Um, and, uh, you know, really it's about, you know, can your investments support your expenses, right? If you want to get into the actual details um, of planning, so. Yeah, it really, it really depends on uh, each uh, individual person, isn't it? Because, I mean, everyone has different goals in mind. Everyone has different uh different uh, different type of income different type of expenses so it really depends on uh, on the person and uh, I guess that uh, you know that because uh, you've had a lot of I mean you, you I mean you have to deal with a lot of people you know their finances you know where where they are right now 
and where they want to mm -hmm. be and you can actually guide them so it's really great that uh, you know all that uh, all that uh, information and uh, you can actually learn from other people and apply it to your own life as well exactly and you know what i've actually learned a lot from you know various clients uh, over the years and um, you know, trends are changing, right? Um, not everybody has that magic pension um, anymore, right? Um, where they can just simply, you know, retire in their 50s and uh, life is good. Um, you know, I do see, yeah, I do see a lot of people now that, um, you know, wh whether they have to or, you know, something they want to just keep busy is um, either part-time jobs, um, so semi-retiring, um, or, you know, somebody starting a, a small business when they retire, right, is kind of a passion project. So um, I do think, uh, you know, we all are living longer as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to keep busy. So um, there are a lot of trends to keep on top of. And uh, so everyone, like you said, does have different priorities and goals. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the next uh, 30 years uh, brings us. 100%. <laughs> And uh, so with, uh, with all the knowledge and with all the people that we have to deal, uh, deal with uh, during all these years and uh, all the experience that, that you have today, uh, what piece of advice would you give to a 20-year-old uh, Robert Anderson? Yeah, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, um, thankfully, you know, not going, I'm still, you know, young enough that, uh, you know, I can uh, still apply a lot of my knowledge that I've gained already, but um, you know, if we do look back, you know, 20 year old me, um, I would say one skill and um, I think I only had one course in this um, at Fanshawe and that was sales. Um, you know, that's something I wish I uh, had learned a bit more, um, you know, while I was in school, uh, you know, whether, you know, I could have just had a part time sales job to learn some of those skills. Uh, I think that would have helped me um, you know, establish myself um, a lot quicker. Uh, in the business and uh, even in other career channels, um, having sales experience um, can outweigh some education experience, um, definitely. And uh, so that would be one big one. Um, I would say also networking with people. Um, so, you know, getting to know uh, whether that's people in your industry um, or, you know, in the community at large, right? Uh, volunteer circles. I think that's big, um, you know, uh, definitely would have, um, you know, started reading more books um, early, earlier on, uh, you know, I'm starting to, uh, you know, fill up the um, uh, sure. bookcase now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, of course, some of the basics, right, would have put more money away or things like that. But, um, you know, those are, uh, those are some obvious ones, at least. For sure, definitely. Um, Robert, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and discussing this really important topic. Uh, I'm certain that not only students, but everyone will enjoy this great information that you have shared with us. Um, I really want to thank you for your time. And uh, we hope to uh, talk to you soon again, Robert. Hey, thanks again for having me. And uh, if anyone wants to connect, uh, you can find me on social media. I'd be happy to uh, chat. Thanks again.